National Puppy Day. Well, 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 National Puppy Day. So does that mean that you're getting ready to run out to a local pound or maybe pet store to purchase yourself a little bundle of joy? Or are you not so dog friendly and maybe you're sort of like, yeah, I don't need that cuteness for National Puppy Day. I don't know. I can't tell you. All I can tell you for certain is the Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I am back once again. I am Jeff McAleer, and I am the host here at The Daily Dope, as well as the Grand Poobah of the GamingGang.com. So TGIF, yes, it is Friday, March 23rd. So another week in the bag. And uh, I guess today is H-Day plus eight. Mm-hmm. I'll talk about how I'm feeling a little bit later after I uh, tackle the news. So yes, today is National Puppy Day. And I guess I have to be careful saying that because I do not want Pinky and Smokey to hear that and get all upset and have a kitty cat uprising. So I have to admit, all animals have always liked me and I get along with pretty much every animal too. But... I'm just, I'm, I'm a cat guy. I don't know. And it's funny because I never liked cats until I was in my late 20s. Amazingly enough, I did not care for cats up until then. Of course, as a teenager, having a cat pee on you in the middle of the night would probably push you into the area of not being so keen on cats. <laughs> anyway, but I just find cats to be a lot <laughs> more low maintenance and uh, provide just as much uh, cuddling and happiness and so on and so forth. Hey, nothing against dog people. I, My brother and my sister-in-law and the kids, they've got two dogs and their dogs love me to death. So nothing against puppies and dogs and things like that. Ah, just grabbing a sip here real quick. And it's just, it's just water with a little bit of a uh, kind of a, flavoring sugar-free flavoring in it all right so i got running down here last minute so anyway so but i've got everything set up so today what i'm going to do is uh of course i'm going to tackle some news not a ton of news today just really three news pieces but one of them is probably the biggest release of the spring so i'll be talking about that in just a minute and then i am going to review Epic card game from White Wizard Games. Yes, finally getting the review out. (laughs) It was funny because last Friday I was going to, yeah, I'm going to review this for for Friday. Well, and of course, uh, then I was in the hospital on Friday, so no review. So it was weird. It seemed like this kept getting pushed off. So I am going to review it today. All right, and then uh, I will talk about uh, what's coming up next week and a giveaway that's going on and some other stuff that's cooking. But first, let's jump into the news because probably the biggest release of the spring, tabletop game-wise, has arrived. It is in stores, and yes, it is Star Wars Legion from Fantasy Flight Games. Oh yeah, and I've got the dope. The Galactic Civil War has erupted into pitched battle on a thousand planets of the galaxy. Rebel cells sabotage Imperial operations while the Galactic Empire brings the full force of its military machine to bear against the Rebel Alliance. New heroes and generals are forged in the fires of war every day, and you can join their ranks. The Star Wars Legion core set and eight expansions are now available at your local retailer and online through the FFG web store. If you've ever wanted to scramble for cover with a squad of rebel troopers or command the battle from inside an ATST walker, Star Wars Legion offers you the chance to enter the infantry battles 
of the Star Wars saga and flex your military acumen. In every game, you will issue your orders and navigate the chaos of battle. You will impose your commands on the unfolding conflict, and you will lead your forces through the battle, strategically maneuvering and launching cunning attacks. I have a cunning plan, my lord. <laughs> Take command of the Galactic Civil War with nine Star Wars Legion products, all in stores right now. Unless they've sold out, of course. There's the Star Wars Legion Core Set, the Star Wars Legion Dice Pack, the Star Wars Legion Movement Tools and Range Ruler Pack. Yeah, come on, let's get on to some excitement. The ATRT Unit Expansion, Rebel Troopers Unit Expansion, the 74Z Speeder Bikes Unit Expansion. There's the Stormtroopers Unit Expansion and the ATST Unit Expansion as well as the T-47 Airspeeder unit expansion. Lead the charge. Untold thousands of white-armored stormtroopers, rebels drawn from a hundred worlds, each with a reason to hate the Empire and its tyranny. From the rumbling stomp of an ATRT walker, to the concussive explosions of grenades and laser fire, to the mechanical breathing of Darth Vader, Star Wars Legion takes you into the pitched infantry battles of the Galactic Civil War. The Star Wars Legion core set is for two players. I'm telling you, that won't last. It's going to expand out to way more than two players in a game. Ages 14 and up and plays in about one or two hours. The core box carries an MSRP of $89.95. This looks pretty sweet, I have to admit. Uh, skirmish level miniatures in the Star Wars universe, that's like printing money, effectively. How can, how can you go wrong with FFG? I don't know anything about the rules themselves, anything along those lines whatsoever. But I will have a news piece on Monday about uh, the upcoming... I'm kind of changing subjects, kind of changing topics, but... Uh, I will have uh, a news piece on Monday talking about the uh, Fallout Wasteland Warfare that's coming from Modifius Entertainment. And the interesting thing is all these PDFs for the game, including like the core rules, are available for free right now. So that's going to be kind of interesting. I have not seen anything by way of the rules for Star Wars Legion. Because, of course, obviously enough, they're only going to come <laughs> in the core box. All right, I should point out, and sorry, I forgot to mention this while I started the show. There is chat available both on Twitch and YouTube. It's just not on screen. So if you want to chime in, say hello, or when I'm doing my review of Epic Card Game, if you have any questions, want to see something closer up, feel free to ask. Uh, I, you know, if you say howdy, I will identify you and say hello right back. All right, moving right along. Backspinal Games has launched a Kickstarter, this was yesterday, for an Irish folklore-inspired title. And I have got the dope. Yes, because Mournquest is an adventure game filled with myth and folklore from the heart of the Emerald Isle based on the teen novel of the same name by Irish author Gary McElhern. I think it's McElhern. I'm taking a guess it's McElhern. Don't know for sure. Might have got that completely wrong. Anyway, Moon Quest is a cooperative board game for two to four players. Players assume the roles of the book's heroes and must journey in the Moon Mountains to work together to defeat the evil Shimnivore before it's too late. On their quest, they'll encounter many enemies, including infuriating bog beans and the terrifying nightmares like the Banshee, the Changeling, and the Dullahan. And I have to point out, I am first generation Irish, but I decided I was not gonna look like a dope <laughs> and do this news piece with an Irish brogue. To triumph, Heroes must gather charms, equipment, and magical relics to increase their powers and use their skills and combat abilities effectively. There are six hero characters to choose from. 
each brings something different to the game with various levels of courage, strength, and magic, of which I would have zeros across the board, and a unique skill, mine would probably be fleeing, <laughs> they could use during the quest. Heroes could also find some relics such as weapons, jewelry, and perhaps a magical dandelion clock left behind by the elder folk, which they can use to improve their chances against their enemies. Mm -hmm. At the start of a game, players choose a hero to play and take the matching character card and miniature. During the quest, they must make sure to visit the nexus points to gather weapons and items to increase their starting abilities and make themselves into more formidable warriors. By the end of the quest, your team of heroes should be ready to take on the Shimnivor with all the skills and weapons they've accumulated. Of course, Backspinal Games has put together a short Kickstarter video. It's a few seconds over two minutes, but it's gonna give you a much better idea about the game than I possibly can. So why don't we sit back and take a quick peek at the Kickstarter video for Moorn Quest. Have you heard of the Kingdom of Moorn? Beautiful mountains where peace and harmony abound. As thousands of years ago, evil creatures ran amok across Ireland. But the elder folk came to our rescue and defeated the nightmarish fiends during the great holocene they were trapped within the silver orb in true kingdom of morn a realm half real half imagined there they have waited their one aim to tear down the morn wall and set the old one's war dog free morn quest is a cooperative board game for two to four players based on the morn quest novel by irish author gary McElhern. heroes jack Cobbs, and their friends gather power from the land itself with granite blackthorn flax and gold they hunt for magical relics of the elder folk to boost their skills but even the bog beans the normally elusive fairy folk of the dark forests and marshlands seem set to block their path each hero is embodied in an amazingly crafted miniature with a scorecard showing their individual strengths and weaknesses. Depending on the changing cycle of the moon, the heroes and nightmares possess different abilities which can help or hinder their quest. Join Jack Turner and Cobbs, a 437-year-old Cluricon, don't call him a leprechaun, who lives alone in a creaky old mansion perched high on top of a tree that grows within a tree. On your quest, you will battle many enemies, from the sniveling snipes, the worrisome warts, onto the bewitching banshees, and the deadliest Dullahan, all united under the terrifying influence of the most evil of creatures, the Shimnivore. Back our Kickstarter campaign, defeat the nightmares, and you become the heroes of the Morn Quest. There you have it. Moon Quest is for two to four players ages 10 and up and plays in about 90 to 120 minutes. You can secure the retail edition at a $55 pledge level through April 12th. The proposed delivery is December 2018. So I do have to point out uh, right now, Moon Quest is about it's about 80% funded in the first day. So obviously enough, this is going to fund. I do want to point out that uh, there is a deluxe edition, but it's uh, kind of funny because you can only get the deluxe edition through midnight Greenwich Mean Time, which is about uh, maybe about three hours, 45 minutes from now, from right now. And the deluxe edition is $99. I don't think it's changed. I think it's just $99. And it's going to include a lot of miniatures, extra minis. Uh, in fact, I could have swore the hero miniatures might end up being painted. I might be wrong with that. But uh, I do understand that you are looking at... Because there's standees for the bog beans... Uh, whereas in the deluxe edition, there are, everything's going to have miniatures. You're not going to have the little standees for anything. So I just wanted to point that out. But unfortunately, 
most people who, who see this episode of The Daily Dope are going to miss out on the chance to get that deluxe edition. Anywho, I know everybody out there who watches The Daily Dope knows that I'm always kind of on the, you know, watching out for, for cool sales or freebies. So one of the reasons why I mentioned the uh, Fallout <laughs> Wasteland Warfare, all these PDFs being free for it right now. Anyway, of course, Thursdays are usually RPG days. Fridays, I kind of, eh, it's kind of anything. It's more family fun Fridays. But I did want to point out right now, there is a new bundle through Bundle of Holding that will save you quite a bit of money on the old and new <laughs> systems from N Publishing, E-N Publishing. And of course, if you aren't overly familiar with N Publishing, those are the folks who are behind N World. So, and they have released, gosh, hundreds of books over the years. So, there is the What's Old is New bundle, and it's going to include uh, a system of crunchy tactical tabletop role playing game cool toolkits designed to work together. <clears throat> Here's the dope. So, there's old. So it's O period L period D, right? All right. That is medieval fantasy. And then there's new N-E-W, which is far future science fiction. This special bundle is going to include some supplements and source books as well. Designed by N-World's Russ Morris Morrissey and funded in an April 2014 Kickstarter campaign, the Woin... W-O-I-N, uh, what is old is new. Games let you play an android engineer, small folk burglar, mutant vigilante, human marine, orc fire mage, augmented con artist, sylvan elf ranger, Borean star pilot, and many more. Tweak the system dials to handle low or high fantasy, hard or soft science fiction. That sounds kind of dirty. And so on. Using each book's extensive tools, create your own races, life path, careers, planets, freeform spell paths, starships, strongholds, martial arts, and monsters. Focus on one genre or mix and match them to create urban fantasy, cyberpunk, or spells in space. Spells in space! Hack the system, mold it to your setting, and because the free Woin Rules reference document is designated open game content, even publish your creations free or for profit. For just $9.95, you get all six games and supplements in our starter collection as PDF eBooks. There's Old, the fantasy heroic role-playing game version 1.1, the complete fantasy medieval rulebook with versatile life path character creation, innovative freeform spell point magic, fast but tactical combat, and tools to build any setting from Tolkien to Braveheart. It also includes the free adventure, The Haunting of Calro Ruins, three Woin guides to contemporary fast and furious adventure, modern core, modern equipment, and action careers. And there's also the Ills of Hengist Bury and the free Holdenshire Primer, an introductory sandbox campaign adapted from the 5e adventure to slay a dragon. If you pay more than the threshold price of $25.84, you'll level up and also get our entire bonus collection with eight more titles worth an additional $79. There's New, the science fiction role-playing game version 1.2, the complete 310-page rulebook for every style of science fiction adventure from Trek to Wars to Firefly and more. How do they get away with saying Firefly? They don't want to say Star Trek, they don't want to say Star Wars, but then they say Firefly. Hmm. Includes the free adventure Death on Ascalon. Xenomorphs, The Fall of Somerset Landing, a new source book of science fiction survival horror on a terraforming colony invaded by predatory predatory the aliens hmm why does that sound familiar two new <laughs> starship guides 
Starship Construction Manual, and Starship Recognition Manual. Three new articles from the Woyne Magazine Eons. Race Building Engine, Trappist, and Real Soul Space. And You're All Doomed! An unapologetically deadly meta-dungeon crawl by Kiel Chenier. Guessing at that. Author of Blood in the Chocolate for the old RPG. So I have to say, not a bad deal. That is a pretty good deal, uh, especially from what I've heard. Now, I am not overly familiar with old, and I'm not familiar with new, but I have heard really good things about the new science fiction source book, the, the core book, the 310-page book that you get if you go over the 20, what was it, $25 excuse me, threshold. So I have heard really, really good things about that. So looks like for about 26 bucks, you can get your hands on some really good end publishing products out there. So just wanted to share that with you. That is really it for the news. Like I said, pretty quiet on the news front. There's just a lot of Kickstarter stuff out there right now. And it's, it's getting tough to sort through the wheat from the chafe, if you know what I mean. And uh, this week, I didn't really want to invest a whole lot of time doing a whole lot of research on the various different Kickstarters out there. I probably will over the weekend, but I always like to when I'm doing the news. I never want to include more than, say, one Kickstarter on each show, simply because I don't want this to be a Kickstarter news kind of program. If you know what I mean, jelly beans. Okay, so uh, I wanted to talk about how I'm feeling, how I'm doing, and uh, I'm I'm doing good. I'm on gosh, like six medications now. That was a nothing before. Now I'm on uh, six medications I'm taking every day, uh, so I'm feeling pretty good. Energy's coming back. I do find myself getting a little tired. Every once in a while, like after yesterday's show, I need to take a nap for about 45 minutes. But uh, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm just waiting until I go and see my cardiologist again next week, see what's cooking. Because I would like to kind of get out and exercise a little bit, you know, do a little walking. Unfortunately, I can't drive right now. I'm not cleared to drive. Otherwise, I'd be covering Adepticon today and over the weekend. Sorry. I was really looking forward to it, too. Uh, because Byron Collins from Collins Epic War Games was displaying, and I guess he's doing some demos for Polyversal, which is a 6mm sci-fi, uh, pretty kind of kind of heavy sci-fi uh, battle game that looks really, really cool. And uh, I was looking forward to seeing him again, because he's a pal of mine in the industry. So... And find out about some other miniatures companies out there. Because I know there are quite a few who are there displaying. So anyway, yeah, that kind of stinks. Couldn't actually drag somebody to, you know, drive me over to York, or from like Yorkville over to Schomburg, which is, you know, about an hour away. And then be like, okay, well, now you got to hang around and wait or come back later and pick me up. So, eh. All right, so what's cooking next week? All right, so on Monday's show, I am going to take a look at Of Dreams and Shadows from Greenbrier Games. This is looking pretty cool. This has a very epic feel to it. And uh, I keep pointing out, it's not part of the Folklore of the Affliction lineup, but I think it's got kind of the same sort of RPG elements to it. So that's going to be pretty cool. I'm hoping we're going to get a chance to play... Thanos Rising over the weekend. It's looking promising. It's It looks like I should be able to get enough games in, of this to do a review. Then on Wednesday, which of course it's War Game Wednesday, keeping my fingers crossed. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I'm going to try to get in some at any cost Mets 1870 from my good pal Herman Lutman who is the designer, and it is from the fine folks over at GMT Games. All right, before I jump into my review, I also want to point out I am in the midst of a giveaway. 
So if you uh, caught last Thursday's show, I did a review for Amazing Tales, which is self-published from Martin Lloyd. Really enjoyed it. I I think this is an excellent book for those out there who have small children and they want to turn story time into, uh, let's say, role-playing time. So right now, all you got to do is comment on one of the videos in uh, one of the YouTube videos until next Thursday, which will be the 28th. And I will randomly choose a winner for this, for the hardcover. This is the premium edition. I will send that on out. So Mr. Pajama Pants says, talk about battle toads. Now I think I'll take a pass. All right, so I'm going to take a look at Epic Card Game here. Let's shift on over. And it is from White Wizard Games. And White Wizard is the makers of Hero Realms and, of course, Star Realms. Star Realms is the game that's really, really big for them. I have not had a chance to check out Star Realms. Did really dig Hero Realms. Uh, The gang and I really liked the fact that you could jump right into it, get right right to the game and that, and uh, played rather quickly. So, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to pop on my reading specs because I'm a little far off from the cards themselves. So you're going to have the rules. And the rules are pretty short, pretty, pretty small. Talking about different cards. There's events and champions. Those are the two kinds of cards. It's going to talk about playing a card, powers and abilities, Continuous abilities, triggered abilities, champion positions, talking about the turn, battle phase, end phase, some keywords and terms. The keywords and terms are, uh, you want to have that handy, especially when you're first learning to play, because you're going to see that this game has a very, very Magic the Gathering vibe to it. I don't want to necessarily say that, whoops, that it is a ripoff of Magic the Gathering. I'm not going to go that far and say that. But there are quite a few mechanics that uh, the two games share. And there are a variety of different things which are known uh, as, as one name in Magic. That, of course, same exact thing here. And they just have a different name for it. So... It's like, remember, tapping. You, only only game that can refer to tapping a card is Magic the Gathering because they have copy written that. So, anyway. Let's take a look at some of these cards here. So, first off, in the deck, you've got eight cards, which are tokens. Because you may end up having um, different effects from the card which means you have to bring a a token creature out, a very weak creature. So, for an example, we've got on this, we've got four zombie tokens. We've got four wolf tokens. Then we've got human tokens, four of these. And then demon tokens. Over here. So, easy peasy. Those just stay off to the side. Then we've got 120 cards. And there are a variety of different ways that you can play Epic Card Game. You can play it as straight up, you just deal each player 30 cards and that's their deck and they're going to go to town on the deck. Didn't really care for that way of playing because it's just so random. Whereas you'll have, you know, nothing that's actually, not, I can't say you would have nothing, but you won't have a lot of cards that actually work well with each other. So you also have the uh, ability to do a draft. You can uh, sit there and, and kind of, you can deal out 10 cards. That's kind of a, kind of like a booster draft would be. So you have 10 cards, another 10 cards, another 10 cards. And depending on how many players, cause this can be for two to four, you're just gonna continue to draft cards until everybody has a 30-card deck. 
So let's take a look at some of these cards. So we've got an evil event. Let's get, uh, there's a champion here too. All right, so let's grab some of the different, uh, where are we? Ah, here we go. Got some humans there and secret. Now oh, let's get a creature. There we go. There's a champion. Okay. So looking at the cards, you are going to see that the cards are either events or champions. One of the two. That's it. That's that's all there is. There isn't a bunch of, oh, this is an enchantment, or this is a spell, or none of that kind of stuff. So you'll find that it, it moves, this game moves much faster than magic. I mean, the reality is you're going to get a game of epic in, in probably 10 to 15 minutes. Now, they indicate about 20 minutes. Uh, 20 minutes, maybe with four players, maybe a little bit more. But if you're just playing two players, you're usually done in about 10 or 15 minutes. It's that fast. Because you're going to see that these, these creatures, the, uh, the champions, and some of these events can deal out, like, loads of damage. So each player is going to start with 30 health. And there are no cards like there are in, let's say, like Hero Realms for you to indicate what your health is. There's there's no health tracker. So you're going to just, you can use some dice if you want. Of course, if you had a 30-sided die, I guess that works. Most people do not have 30-siders. You can just use a piece of paper and a pen to keep track. Or if you happen to have Hero Realms, you can use those cards too to track your health. So you're going to start off, and the first player is going to get five cards out of their deck. And I thought it was kind of interesting because there's the, there's a mulligan rule, right? So that on your first turn, you can mulligan, but it's going to cost you health. So I thought that was kind of cool. That was a cool little twist in there because most games, it's like, oh, you want to take a mulligan? That's fine. You can replace your cards in that. No, it's going to cost you some health here. All right, so we're going to take a look at the cards themselves just kind of give you an idea and i am not going to go into a full-blown how to play for epic card game because this has been out since 2016 so this has been out for a while so you're going to see you're going to have a faction there are four factions if we were playing magic we could be sitting there saying well that's a mana color right anyway so we got the the red is evil then you're going to see in the corner, it's either going to have a one or a zero. So every turn, the player is going to receive one gold piece. And they can decide to spend it. They don't need to spend it, but it doesn't carry over. So you're not sitting there tracking a bunch of gold piece tokens. What you'll find is anything that costs one gold tends to be pretty powerful. So you've got the faction, you've got the cost, you've got the name. So this is the Angel of Death. So I would uh, I would assume the Angel of Death should be pretty tough, <laughs> right? That's why you're paying one gold for it. So you're going to see here we've got a six. So this is the attack value. This is the defense value. Now the Angel of Death is airborne. So what that basically means, just like in magic, you've got flying. The only way you can stop an airborne attack to soak damage from a uh, an airborne attack by a defender is if they are also airborne. So then you'll see loyalty two with an arrow break all other champions. So breaking a champion is effectively discarding that champion that you have summoned. So that is the special ability that they have. But thing is for you to be able to use this uh you're, it's not you just it's not as if you can just go okay well i'm uh i'm gonna turn it 90 degrees here and i'm gonna use that special event no you've got with the arrow you're gonna have to make sure something else happens first all right so then we've got army of the apocalypse this is also one gold and this is an event and it says draw two cards or if it's your turn, each player returns all champions in their discard pile to play without triggering loyalty or tribute abilities. 
So the triggering aspect is, it's not difficult to learn how it works, but it's, it's, it's similar to, uh, I'm not gonna keep referring to magic. I'm, I'm just gonna say, it's not, it's not something you can do automatically. You have to be able to do something to trigger that. All right, so that's kind of an idea there. Then we've got the blue, which is sort of, uh, I, I don't wanna necessarily say it's like C related cause there's different, there's different cards in the blue but it tends to be a little bit more um, magical, enchantment-wise, kind of magics and stuff as far as the events. So we have the Sea Titan. He's a champion. He's won gold. Now look at this, all right? So he's got a power of 11. He's got an attack power of 11. He's got a defense of 14. Oh, hey, look, he's untargetable. And as a tribute, return target champion to its owner's hand you're going to find that that epic is pretty much filled with like some of like the the biggest baddest uh champions that you could possibly get right compared to in other say let's say collectible card games or even non-collectible card games there there are no little i mean there are a few right we've got these tokens right these token creatures but you're going to find you're not going to have you're not going to sit there and play a few turns and start, you know, building up what you can do. And all right, uh, now I can just like bash you with with an attack. But it's taken me so many turns to get to this point. <laughs> no, an epic. You can find yourself getting smashed down by some big baddie right off the bat. Because as you saw, the Sea Titan costs you one gold <laughs> to bring him into in, into the game. He's not going to cost you a bunch of, let's say, mana or resources to bring him in. So just taking a look at some of the, the wilderness, we've got Flash Fire. So this is a zero card. So it's deal two damage to each champion and player or draw two cards. Now keep in mind, it's do, deal two damage to each champion and player. So that means this Flash Fire would affect everyone, all players. Then we got the Jungle Queen. So there's an example there. And then, so that's kind of the wilderness. And then we've got kind of the human, kind of they're good humans. So I've got a standard bearer. He's a one. Now, if you take a look, he's only got two and a five. Huh, that's kind of weak. But he has a skill of ambushing, which is actually really cool. Then you'll also see your other good champions have plus two. As a tribute, you get to put two human tokens into play because he's the standard bearer. Then you got Resurrection. So here's another example of a more powerful card because it costs you one gold. It says draw two cards or target a champion card in your discard pile that was broken this turn and return it to play. All right, so that's kind of an idea of some of the cards. So moving on to the gameplay itself, very, very similar to um, that one game that <laughs> I was talking about a little while ago. So what you're gonna do, I'm just using these as I didn't sort through as a deck or anything like that. So the first player is gonna have five cards. So let's go one, two, three, four, five. Effectively like a deck building game, you're sitting there and you're, you're going to be able to uh, play as many cards as you possibly can. So the only thing that's gonna stop you from bringing in like some of the big baddies, or I shouldn't say baddies, they're not all bad. Some of the big champions or some of the, uh, some of the spells or events, I should say, that are really powerful is simply the cost. So you only get the one gold piece each turn. So what we're looking at here so we've got uh, two cards that are ones, a zero, and another two cards that are ones. So you might sit there and say, oh, okay. Um, so I am going to play... Oh, what the hell. <laughs> let's just do a noble unicorn. All right. So let's zoom in a little bit. Let's go just a touch. All right. So... 
because these are just the tokens. All right, so say, okay, so I, I decided I'm going to play that. Well, everything else except for the Priest of Kelnor card requires more gold. Okay, so I'd say, oh, okay, I can I can play the Priest of Kelnor card. And we drop that down. So you're going to take a look here. So we see Ambush. Says you may play a champion with Ambush anytime you're allowed to play an event, even during an opponent's turn. Remember, your champions are deploying until the start of your turn with them in play. So what happens is now, the, yes, there's that <clears throat> sickness in that other game. Same thing happens here, except what you're going to do is you're going to place them upside down. And then it's going to move to the next player. Whoops, trying to zoom back out. All right. So then the next player is going to... So, and of course, you don't have to... You're not discarding anything. You can have a hand of up to seven cards. Uh, if you have more than seven cards, then you do have to disca discard down to seven. All right. So then the next player, they're going to take their turn. Now, there are some different things that you can do uh, within the turn. So basically, the whole premise is each player will get to play their cards. You're going to take care of the event cards that come into play. You're, then you're going to have an attack phase. And then you'll have kind of a cleanup phase. And there isn't a ton of cleanup done in the game. So, so anyway, all right. So let's say for an example, uh, that was that turn. Okay, and the opponent, he's going to play. Let's see what we got here. Uh, uh, just for the heck of it, here comes Jungle Queen. And uh, maybe they had Flash Fire, just for the heck of it. And then they would have had three cards, but then this is an event, right? So that champion would come in upside down. So we're just, that's facing the other player, right? So this would have come in upside down. This is an event. The event will, there's no um, deploying an event. The event takes place. So for an example, they could have said, well, I'm going to, I'm going to use the special ability here to draw two cards, but I'm going to have to spend, oh, sorry. Yep. Sorry. They would have had to spend two gold. I'm sorry. One gold to do that. So what they'd be doing is they'd be dealing two points damage to each champion and each player. Which, of course, just like other games, you have to do enough damage in a turn to a champion to break them. Basically, that means they get discarded. Now, there are uh, some other things that will actually remove a champion from play. So that means they don't go to your discard. They actually get taken out of play. All right. So for an example, let's say uh, we're back to our... Back to the other player's turn. Jungle Queen's up. So, just like in most games, you're going to have... Okay, so, let's say we've got a couple of cards here. All right, what's what are we doing here? Huh? Let's see, Amnesia. Banish target player's discard pile. Recycle or spend one to draw two cards. Now, let's see. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, we got an evil event, Apocalypse. I could spend my one gold to do that. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. So, you'll have the various different aspects of the card. Like I said, you're going to have, just like, just like in Magic, you had to study, okay, what does each thing do? What is Blitz? What is Breakthrough? What does Deploying mean? Um token champion, unblockable, unbanishable, untargetable, unbreakable. There aren't a ton of different things. A tribute, for an example, you'll see a lot of cards will say tribute. It says when a champion with tribute enters play, you gain the effect listed after the arrow. Bingo. Then you got loyalty, right? So you take a look at loyalty. Ah, where was it? Oh, duh. when you've got another 
uh, with uh, some of the special attributes, you have to make sure that you when you're when you bring something in that it's that it costs one. So you can use the special. So it's loyalty two. You could use that special ability if you were bringing in another champion who costs you one gold, which unfortunately we don't have. All right, so let's say we're going to the attack. So my player says, oh, okay, I'm going to attack here. So I'm going to attack with both of these both of these characters. So turning the card 90 degrees means you're activating it in some way. So I'm just doing a straight-out kind of attack. And, of course, then the defending player says, okay, I'm going to block. And so you'll flip it upside down show that it's blocking. So it, once you've blocked with something, you can't do anything with that champion again that turn. All right, so I'm going to block here. So I've got an attack of six. I've got an attack of one. This is a, an attack of five and a defense of seven. So I could say, and it's simultaneous. So it's like, okay, so uh, the jungle... Queen decides, okay, I'm going to block here. So Jungle Queen's absorbing six, but it has a defense of seven. And I get to do one point of damage to my opponent because that's being unblocked. But then keep in mind, there's five attack as well. So you can decide where, where the attack points are going to and where the defensive points are going to be played so it's not as in depth as some other games that are out there where you have to track all the different okay who's hitting who and who goes first and all these other things all right so just to kind of give you an example that's how that works and keep in mind you start getting these big champions out there that have you know 10 11 <laughs> points of attack you can easily end up wiping somebody out of this game in just a few rounds, just a few turns, uh, especially when you've got players who maybe they're not getting great cards in their hand. So really, all you do is you keep playing until you get to get one of the players down to zero health. Now, at the four-player game, you can play teams, you can play a four-player free-for-all, however you want to do it, but very, very similar. Now... I got a kick out of all the different events. I thought the artwork is really, really cool. See here, the Rampaging Worm. A 14 and 14 for, and it's one gold. So like I said before, it's like you're bringing out like the baddest monsters or champions or heroes from other games like right away. <laughs> so here we go, Raging T-Rex, one gold. And, of course, there, there are cards that are zero, too. But the thing is, you're not going to find a ton of the zero cards. So this doesn't really turn into a game where you're sitting there with just a, a slew of little creatures that are just pinging your opponent, just stinging them every turn to death. This is a game where it's usually you drop the hammer on the other player with a big old monster or with a bunch of really, really powerful creatures. Uh, and that's why I say the game only takes 10, 15 minutes, especially with two players. It's super, super fast with two players. So what do I think of Epic Card Game from White Wizard Games? I like it. I thought it's fun. Um... Of course, it's one, another one of these games where you have to kind of constantly be looking for a while, constantly be looking at the rules for all the different uh, special abilities and the differences between like tribute or loyalty, things like that. It doesn't take a whole lot of time to wrap your head around, not like some other collectible card games. So there isn't really, you don't really run across a lot of timing issues either. And there's some pretty basic rules of, Okay, so timing basically says events that one player is playing will all take place at one time, and then you'll have another player. So, because you got to keep in mind that um, once you attack, the attacker can buff up their their heroes, but 
The defender can also buff up their champions as well. But that's really the only time that a player gets to do stuff outside of their own turn. So there's no interrupts or anything like that, which I thought was kind of cool. So the question basically is when it boils down to it. Now, Epic's been out for a while, and I, I do believe there are like some expansion packs that are available out there as well. Uh, as far as like just the basic way of playing where you deal out 30 cards to each player. Mm, now. That's really not going to work. It, it reminds me of, uh, and I will say completely up front, that when I first got into Magic back when I was in a beta, I, I wasn't the guy who actually sat there and like built a deck. It was like, man, I want all my cards. <laughs> it was like, what am I, an idiot, right? So... So there's, that, there's like that whole randomness there. Uh, but if you do the drafts, the variety of different ways to do the drafts for the game, yeah, then it then it works out pretty well because then you each player is going to have an opportunity to kind of say, well, okay, so I want to kind of focus on, let's say, the evil red faction. And another player says, yeah, I kind of want to focus a little bit more on the blue. So it gives you an opportunity to kind of tweak the deck that way. So I did, did like that. Very, very easy to, to do the drafts that way. For fans of Magic the Gathering, for an example... Is this a replacement? No, absolutely not. It's just not as uh, in-depth as Magic might be. Now, for people who have not played Magic or who have found that Magic is kind of a little too opaque for them to pick up, then Epic might be a way to go. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to grab a quick sip here. Here's kind of the issue that I have. And I, I don't I don't have an issue with the game, right? The game is fun. The game is cool. Plays really quick. The thing that kind of throws me a little bit is I liked Hero Realms a lot more than I did Epic Card Game. There are a few similarities, not a lot, but a little similar. And, uh, of course, as I pointed out before, too, that there are a lot of mechanics or aspects to Epic Card Game that are found also in Magic the Gathering, just with different terminology. It doesn't make it a bad game. I just found Hero Realms to be a much more entertaining game, a lot easier to jump into, which I thought was kind of strange, because the rule book is really short. Of course, Hero Realms is uh, just like a, a page for both sides. But uh, I found Hero Realms to be much easier to jump into. Okay, but I also have to point out that you're looking at an MSRP for Epic of $15. And there's a lot of gaming goodness packed into this box for $15. And since it's been out for a while... I have found it online for less than $11. So that is a really, really good price for a good game, for a fun game. If you're, like I said, if you're a fan of Magic the Gathering, you play a lot of Magic, or let's say you play a lot of Hero Realms, this might not scratch the itch. I can't tell you. But I will give Epic a 73 out of 10 as a final score. Because like I said, I like the game. I think it's a good game. I certainly don't believe that it's, you know, reinventing the wheel for non-collectible card games by any stretch of the imagination. But it is a fun game. And uh, I did enjoy it. Cameron enjoyed it. And uh, his friend Kyle enjoyed it as well. The other Cameron, not so much. But he's a Magic player. So, I mean, we're all... A, I'm a Magic player too, but I haven't played in quite a while. But uh, yeah, dug it. I thought it was pretty cool. All right, so that is it for the Friday show. I will be back on Monday. As I pointed out, on Monday, I will be taking a look at Of Dreams and Shadows, an immersive story, a shared experience. Ooh, so I'm going to be taking a first look at this, and uh, that should be pretty cool. All right, so when you're not watching The Daily Dope, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. Come on, by now you know the drill. 
Hit your geek on at thegaminggang.com. As I mentioned, I will be back on Monday. Once again, I am Jeff McAleer. And until then, have a great weekend. Have a very safe weekend. And thanks for watching.